is this uh, is is it true do you think that he's gone because he touched your knee repeatedly 15 years ago no i don't believe that for a moment all the people i've spoken to in and around the conservative party in downing street seem to make clear that they expect other allegations uh, to surface um, mm. my understanding is that uh, the prime minister uh, felt that it was time for him to go and he's been a strong ally of the prime minister a big stalwart very very strong figure in this government um, but I, I think he's a massive loss so i think that they, they must be concerned about this drip, drip, drip of allegations. So I, I had a text message exchange with uh, Sir Michael Fallon last night um, because I certainly uh, didn't want anyone touching my knee 15 years ago, which was done and dealt with, done and dusted 15 years ago to be the cause of someone's career ending. Um, but he's made it very clear to me that, that he does not hold me responsible, which suggests to me that mm. there is something else. So when he was touching on it, were you, did he have a reputation at the time? Because you were in about round Westminster. Mm. Did, was it, I mean, there, were there rumours swirling? You know, well, there were rumours about lots of MPs. And then, I mean, look, it, he, it, wasn't a di I mean, you know, it wasn't a different time. And it was only 15 years ago, for mm. goodness sake. It wasn't in the Victorian ages. Um, there were lots of MPs, and are lots of MPs, who are, who are very, shall we say, convivial, mm. uh, like a drink, like a, a, a good fun, and a lot of a journalists a lot of MPs are on very friendly terms, on, you know, huggy, kissy, how are you terms, long, boozy lunches and the like. And, uh, no, it, it certainly wasn't an issue for me. It was something we, we and I, he and I have stayed friends since, never felt it was an issue. Uh, I only brought it up a year ago in a TV interview as a jokey thing mm. and very specifically didn't name him because I didn't think it was something that should be brought up against him. Uh, one, uh, your experience, Rupa, when, when you first, uh, when you were in, uh, working in, abroad, uh, what we've talked about is, is that power shift when you were volunteering to work in the sort of the, as an assistant for an MEP. And I'm intrigued, Julia, to wonder whether, and, and talk about the fact it's very easy to have this sort of a senior politician that you're working for, sometimes for free and at a young and impressionable age, that they could take advantage of that situation. Did that feel like 15 years ago, Julia, that Michael Fallon, because of his position, he was taking advantage of his power <laughs> with you and He was a backbench Tory MP. I was political editor of a national paper. I could have taken him down the next day if I wanted to. I, I've got to be honest with you. I, mean, I, I know that other women handle things differently, and I absolutely accept that. And I have stepped in for other women in many situations in my working life who didn't feel they could uh, speak up for themselves, and I've always been happy to do so. Um, but I, I was like this when I was 18-year-old uh, as a waitress and would deal with anyone who touched my bum when I was walking by with a with a plate of food, ice bucket, I always found was a very good way of dealing with it. But um, it's amazing how clumsy you can be with those things. Um, but no, I, I, for me, it wasn't a power position. Where a politician or anyone in business, in the army, in any field, where someone is using their position of power to use that uh, for sex mm. uh, against a woman or a man, it happens to men as well, that's completely different. That was not what happened in my case. So, yeah. so in your case, it was him trying it on, Blundering about yes, it was, and, it was a, a, um, and not doing it very well, very elegantly pass, or yes. very in a busy advisedly. restaurant. Yes, uh, and he got his comeuppance because you said no, or I'll punch you. Yes, I, I, I threatened to punch him in the face. We're in a grey area, off. aren't we? Where for you yeah. that was an inappropriate advance that was unwelcome, mm -hmm. but not something that made you lose sleep over. Uh, and for not others, not a nanosecond of sleep. Not no. even a nanosecond no. of thought. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Whereas for Rupert, you were very uncomfortable. I mean, look, this was 22 years ago, so even Trump's 15 years ago. <laughs> And I don't really want to be raking over all the details of that. I think everyone deserves to be treated with dignity and respect. And the difference... I mean, the thing that it hinges on is, is their consent. Why do you keep saying you don't want to rake it over? I don't want to say... Yeah, it's because... because I'll I tell you why I'm asking. Because that's why you're here, because you have personal well, I mean, experience of the story OK, I mean, I did about. an interview on so Monday. So you either felt offended or you it. didn't. I've not had it as an MP. I wouldn't get that now. You know, mm. I'm 45 years old. I've got a lot of grey hair. I'm in a position of power. So, I mean... What me half a lifetime ago is a different me to now. I mm. actually stopped it on the spot. It went no further. I so did were an interview you upset on Monday. By it? I was a bit surprised and startled mm. when someone's hands come towards you and you're not expecting that. It made me jump, I have to say. I did not like it. But the thing is, if there's consent, if people want that, otherwise, if people always rebuffed every advance, none of us would be here. So I think it hinges on, you know, whether that yeah. advance was wanted I, or not. I think that's the key. I, mean, I think a lot of people who, you know, sitting out here watching the Westminster media bubble get itself... That's one of a bad expression, their knickers in a twist. Mm. Um, but actually, uh, you know, ordinary life in ordinary uh, factories and shop floors and, and offices, there is is a little bit of, you know, flirty banter, perhaps a little bit of touching. Now, some of it will be inappropriate. Look, I think we're all sensible enough to know where the line is. But the thing is. is, 
Because other people are going to be very upset by this because they're going to say, look, there are serious things going on. Mm. Women are taking a lot of courage to speak up. Yep. And by you saying, oh, it wasn't a problem, in my case, you're It was a problem. Her. I threatened to punch him in the face if he carried on but doing you, it. You know what I, I said mean, it was a problem. You know what no, I mean? I, I've said repeatedly, and I issued a statement when this all came out. I, you know, I think this, I think talking about this undermines, that's why I keep going on television and radio to talk about this, because I want to make sure that my message is heard. This undermines the genuine cases where people, men and women, mm. are abusing their positions of power and, and harassing or women who are being, women or men who are being raped or sexually assaulted. We need to be focusing on that and not focusing on a totally unimportant, trivial matter. So should he have gone or on. not? Based on my knee, absolutely not. I don't know what the other reasons are. OK. Rupert. Do you believe it's the right thing for... I mean, who knows what's going to come out? We don't really know what happened with these situations, and that is the nature of, I don't know, domestic violence or whatever you call it. It's behind closed doors. So there's a lot of details still to emerge. I imagine it's not just your mm. little frisson that you had 15 years <laughs> ago. Mm. So. Okay.